Hello viewers, welcome to this video lecture series on computer networks. Today's topic of discussion is on Boot P protocol, Bootstrap protocol. I have few diagrams on this board which will give you the complete clarity on the concepts of this protocol that is the working or the functioning of this protocol. So let me begin here. And once again I wanted to tell you that viewers who are watching this session are first informed to watch my previous two sessions. One is on the ARP, the other one is RARP, the third one here today now what I am explaining is boot P because all these three protocols which are mainly used to map uh, address to another address logical to physical and physical to logic the introduction the need for these kind of protocols i have explained in the arp session then i have explained the rarp session and third one is the boot p protocol here so uh, the functioning of boot p protocol is similar to that of the rarp the node is not knowing its logical address the node which wants to send a message in the network is not knowing its logical address. Similar to RARP protocol functioning also, there also we have seen that the node which wants to communicate with the another node is not knowing its own logical address. It knows only its physical address and how one node, uh, how a particular node will come to know about its own physical address. Always we, the physical address or the MAC address is present on the network interface card, NIC. I have a se separate session on this NIC okay in the same series the computer network series you can watch that so on this particular network interface card is the MAC address of the machine so a newly host machine or a newly joined system which doesn't know its own logical address is trying to find in the network okay from the server or from any machine who can provide to this particular node its logical address so here it is making use of the boot p protocol and this boot p protocol works in two scenarios the administrator can put the boot p client and the boot p server both in one network itself or the boot p client can be in one network and the boot p server can be placed in another network so these two scenarios are possible here let us see both the situations both the scenarios so in the first one this client okay let us give this particular host name uh, uh, let us consider this host as a client so the client is making a request here boot p request it is sending in the request its physical address and it wants to know its logical address and one more important information you should know here is this boot p is a application layer protocol okay it is a application layer protocol so just i wanted to make the correction which i have uh, in the very beginning of the arp session i have mentioned here ip rarp ARP and also I mentioned boot P. Boot P is not in the network layer. It is a application layer protocol. So this correction I just wanted to make it here. Boot P is an application layer protocol. So definitely if it, if it is an application layer pr protocol, the topmost layer and uh, if it wants to uh, know its logical address, first this particular message from application layer gets embedded in the transport layer protocol and UDP is the one which is used here. And finally, the UDP boot P request is encapsulated here in the UDP packet and the UDP packet is further in turn encapsulated in the IP packet when it goes to the network layer. So this is an application layer protocol and uh, the client can be in one network, the server can be placed in any other network. Suppose if client and server both are in the same network, the client will send a boot P request. So since it is making use of which transport layer UDP protocol it gets encapsulated in the UDP packet. So we have the port number and the destination the source port number is 68 and the destination port number is 67 and it is not knowing its own logical address. So in that field it will place all zeros whereas it is not even knowing the logical address of the boot P server. So it will what it will include all ones in the destination address so that it is a broadcast address. Once again, it is received by all the nodes in the network, but the boot P server knows that this particular information, the boot P server is maintaining. So boot P server will reply here with the boot P reply and the reply reaches to the client. And this boot P server, when it is sending, it will send a unicast type of reply. So it will reach directly only to the client. This is a situation wherein both the client and the server, both are present in the same network. If both are present in different networks, okay, just to show the diagram look here if both are present in the different network this is one network okay i'm showing here this is one network then via a router that means through this router it has to communicate 
with the router of the other network via internet how it is happening because the client is in one network the server is in another network and you just look the client is knowing is not knowing its logical address very difficult to find out now because the server is also not in the same network so in order to know its logical address or the ip address first it will send a broadcast request look here the broadcast request in this network only and one important one problem may arise here since broadcast request cannot travel from this network to another network it is limited only to this network all the machines that are there in this particular network can only receive this broadcast network so only receive this broadcast request then how to make this request travel to the other network because uh, server is present in the other network for that this network is having a special uh, this network is having a relay agent which will receive this broadcast request that means every network is now maintaining what one more type of machine which we call it as a relay agent relay agent once it receives this broadcast request it will come to know that this particular request has to be sent to the server which is in other network now the relay agent is having the logical address of the server which is there in the other network and look at this uh, functioning the node which is sending a message first of all it is not knowing its own logical address it is not knowing the logical address of the server and now it is trying to send uh, now it is trying to get the information by sending a broadcast request and still it is possible for this node to get the logical address because there is a relay agent here in this network the relay agent can forward this request but when it is forwarding it will convert this broadcast request to unicast request because the relay agent knows the logical address of the server what it will do is it will convert this broadcast request to the unicast request and it will forward this via the internet when the router at the other side that is the other network receives this unicast request it comes to know that it is for this server okay so the packet is sent to this so this request is sent to this boot p server then the boot p server will reply the reply will come via in the same path and it reaches the relay agent the relay agent is now what sending the reply to the boot p client so when it is sending the reply that means when the reply comes from the boot p client the reply is having what the logical address of this machine so in the same network if both are there as i said uh, it is not knowing its logical address so in its place it will fill all values as zeros and destination address it will fill all values as ones but when the reply comes whether it is in the same network or from the other network when the reply comes the source address that means the machine this particular client which wanted to know its logical address that address will be present in the reply so that in future this particular client will use the address and try to communicate with other nodes of all other networks so this is the functioning of the bootstrap protocol and one more thing i wanted to tell you whether it is rarp or whether it is bootstrap both are having what is static way of maintaining the information we say that it is a static mapping okay why static mapping because the servers are maintaining a table one to one okay this is the logical address for this logical address this is the corresponding physical address they are maintaining a table they refer the table the servers and they try to send the reply so this particular system these type of protocols are not currently in use normally the one which has replaced this is dhcp dynamic host configuration protocol which is having both type of mapping both that means static as well as dynamic so this uh, complete uh, video lecture on dynamic host configuration protocol is available on my playlist you can watch this so that you can come to know definitely what is the advantage here over the rarp protocol and the boot p protocol so hope it is clear to you all now the differences the functioning of each of these protocols first one is the arp arp is trying to find the physical address for a given logical address whereas rarp and boot p are trying to find out the logical address for a given physical address similarly dhcp also tries to find the logical address for a given physical address but it is having what a dynamic mapping also and static mapping also whereas arp and rarp both are having the static type of mapping so hope this session is useful to you all if you find this session useful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye and take care